Welcome to the beer game. This game was originally developed by the folks at MIT uh, to describe the bullwhip effect with supply chains. The beergame.org is the original software, uh, which requires Flash, um, and Flash is no longer supported by most browsers and for security reasons. Um, so you could try downloading it and using it. It has a lot more features than the spreadsheet that I've created. Uh, but the purpose of the spreadsheet is so that teachers in classrooms could use this with their own students to teach them about supply chain issues and the bullwhip effect and uh, how supply chain delays or increases in demand can cause all kinds of havoc on uh, the supply chains, which we're currently experiencing in the year 2021. And we experienced a little bit in 2020 with the initial uh, pandemic with toilet paper. Uh, the, how the game is played is all described here on their webpage. It's based on four teams, factory, distributor, wholesaler, and retailer. Orders flow from the retailer up towards the factory for demand and product, which is the supply, is flows from the factory down to the retailers. If there is not enough inventory in any one of these teams, obviously there will be a backlog and causes issues. The playing of the game is, has five steps that occur within each week. I have simplified it so that the first four steps are automatically calculated and um, performed by the spreadsheet itself. The only step, which is the only step that the players would ever take even during the regular game, is to decide on the amount to be ordered for that week. So I'm not gonna go into details about the game, you can search on YouTube for how the game is played in real life with chips and um, writing down the numbers and calculating out all the stuff. It's a lot more fun to do it where the spreadsheet does all the work for you. Uh, the software itself would have done all the work for you also. Um, there is some information that is shared in my spreadsheet, uh, like the how much is coming in from the delays and how much was actually shipped out but you don't know what the inventory is of the upstream is, and you don't know what the orders are that are gonna come in from downstream. But you can make modifications to the spreadsheet and expand it out for whatever purposes you want. Um, I'm gonna give you a suggestion on how to uh, perform this for students in the classroom. When you open up the spreadsheet, there are two hidden sheets that shouldn't be shown because they're just the worksheets where things where work actually happens. The summary page should be uh, displayed only to the teacher or to the administrator. Um, they can just kind of keep an, uh, an eye on things and on track on how things are going. Uh, and then each team will have uh, their own sheet, the factory, supplier, wholesaler, and retailer. So you would share this entire spreadsheet with the entire uh, group of students that would be use, utilizing this. You would assign them each to a sheet themselves. So in this case, we're gonna play the role of the retailer. And the only thing that the students should be doing is entering a field into that green celled number, uh, green celled, uh, green shaded cell. The number they place in there is the order that they're going to place. The rest of this information is all calculated by the spreadsheet and basically are the steps one through four for the initial, um, for, the pre for the game that as it was described on the webpage. Uh, the costs are always going to be whatever your inventory is for that week times $1 for inventory. And if you have a backlog, which means you have negative inventory and you owe shipments out, the backlog will be whatever the total of your backlog is times $2. The amount shipped will be based on how much was ordered. Or if you have a backlog, it'll be to fill whatever was in the backlog also. So in this case, a new order came in for five. We had shipped out five, which left us with an inventory of 15 total. So this assumed that we had 20 at week zero. This also tells you how much is coming in the delay in the shipment process. So you know how much was shipped out from your upstream supplier. So my wholesaler has shipped out five units uh, from this week, which will arrive in two weeks. 
and I didn't place an order for the week zero, so zero is coming in next week for here. So five will come from here, and it'll also come, it'll take two weeks to get here, hence why next week it'll be five for the following week, which will come into this inventory here. It'll get added into this cell here. <coughs> the place your order. Uh, so we'll start with an order of five, just to see how things roll. Since five came in for an incoming order, we'll place an order for five also from our wholesaler. And the other three field, other three teams have already been pre-filled out by me, just so that you can see how this process rolls. As you can see, none came in. That's why our we had an order of five, and we shipped out five. So our inventory went down to ten here. So next week we'll have an inventory of fifteen. If there's an order of zero, if there's and whatever the order is here, as long as it's less than fifteen, we'll be able to fulfill it and ship it out, and our inventory will be reduced by that much. So we place an order of five, which our wholesaler has sent out five to bring us to five here. So for now, we're going to enter five for the next order and five for the next order. And we're feeling pretty comfortable here. Okay. The new order is coming in our fives. So since we're pretty comfortable, we want to reduce our costs because we're still paying $10 each week for our inventory. So let's just do zero this week and then five next week. Obviously, I know what the incoming orders are for the retailer, um, but this is just so I can speed through the video a little faster. So I'm going to enter five. And here we can see this zero is what we ordered. And now we're reduced again by five because we have an incoming order of five. We have an inventory of 10. We shipped out five. So we'll keep doing that. And let's just do, actually, you know what? Yeah, let's just do zero for this week here. So every time we enter an order and all four teams have finally placed their order for that week, the green field moves down one to the next week. All right, so next week we should have zero in our inventory when we hit a five here. Oh no, new order of 10 came in. So now we have a backlog of five, which actually is costing us more than what it was before. So, since we have a backlog, um, let's just put in an order of 20 just so that we can try to catch up and kind of fill that in. So we put in an order of 20. It'll come in in a couple of weeks. Now the demand seems to be a set of 10. This is like kind of crazy. So let's just order another 10 here. Oh no, my wholesaler only sent me five. Okay, so he was able to fulfill the 20 order, but not my five order, my 10 order the following week. So now the shelves are getting unstocked. There, there's nothing on the shelves in my store. I can't ship out anything except for whatever I'm getting in, in from uh, each shipment. I got five in. I only shipped out five. I got 20 in. Whatever this order is, I'm going to ship out at least 15 and whatever this order is. So let's order another 10. Oh my God, there's still only five coming for my order. So I shipped out 20 because that's all I had that came in. Basically, as fast as I'm getting it in, I'm sending it out and I'm still backlog. I still owe money to or supply to my, uh, to my customers. All right, so let's just double this up again because obviously my wholesaler is having some problem with the with the orders. Uh, we can see that they're still only fulfilling five each week instead of what I was asking for, which is 20. Now that stuff is still coming to me. It's just a backlog. It's going to come to me in a later shipment once they finally get inventory in. Um, so let's take a quick break here and cheat. We can look at the summary. We can see Right here, this is where we started having a backlog and we started putting bigger orders and now the wholesaler has a backlog and they have no inventory and their supplier has no inventory and the factory has no inventory. And this is the beginning of the bullwhip effect where everybody's gonna start ordering a lot more stuff to try to fulfill their backlog of orders. 
So I'm not going to order too crazy, but, you know, it's kind of like when you go to the supermarket and you buy a gallon a week every week, and then you go to the supermarket and they don't have a gallon of milk one week. And you're like, well, that sucks. And then you go next week and they have milk. You're like, well, let me get two gallons just in case they don't have it for next week. Well, that's the same scenario. I'm going to place another order for 20. And again, they only shipped out 10. So again, they don't have enough supply to keep to, to fill in with what I'm ordering. But the demand here has been pretty steady with 10 from my customers. So I'm going to keep filling in 10 because I know eventually I'll, I'll get a my, my wholesaler will catch up with his inventory. Maybe I'll throw in an extra 20 here. Ah, there we go. I have an order of 50 coming in in two weeks here. So now my backlog will go down back to zero and my costs won't be so high. This is the highest my costs have been this entire game so far. So now I'll stick to 10. 10. It doesn't matter if I try to have an inventory on my own, the problem was is that my wholesaler was causing my backlog because they couldn't fulfill the orders that I was asking for. I'm asking for 20 and they only can give me 10 or five. So here I'm finally down to zero, which brings my cost down. And I keep ordering 10s because now I have a nice amount of stuff coming in. Oh my God, they are sending me zero. So they're back down to no inventory again, uh, probably from supply chain problems up ahead and so forth. I will continue playing, oops, the game. That's not what should have happened. I will continue playing the game by entering numbers until I get down. Once you get to week 35 is when you should probably start thinking about when to stop the game before week 50. So this, this, this spreadsheet goes from week one all the way down to week 50. You want to stop the game abruptly at any point after week 35 or 40, but before long before 50 so that people don't try to stabilize um, where they are with things. And here you can keep playing it out. And I'm still trying to get my backlog filled, which is, it's not, I'm, I'm, I'm finally getting 30 in here. I'm getting 50 finally from my supplier, my wholesaler, sorry, my wholesaler. And finally I'm in the black again with my inventory. So let's just take a look at where we are. Let's say the game stopped here, go to the summary. And this is the bullwhip effect that you can see on the inventory. And here are the total costs for it at the end of each week. And you can see the wholesaler here has lost the most amount of money. Whereas the factory had the used up the least amount of money because they had fulfilled most of their inventory uh, requirements or their orders without having too much inventory or too much backlog. Um, in comparison to the other three teams. And that is how you play this game. Uh, in the next video, I will show how the actual spreadsheet does the work. Um, but again, you would share the spreadsheet, assign students to, of each team to one of the sheets. And just to show you how it would look when they start, you would erase just place your order column for each of them. And they would start by discussing how much they're gonna order. They all start with the same initial the same initial incoming order, the same inventory, and the same amount that they shipped uh, for all three teams. Of all four teams, sorry. Once each team member places a, a number, once each team has placed a number into their field, they, this green field with 
continue to the next one. Just to be a quick show. Five here, five here, five here, and factory. And then you'll see a jump down to the next field for all of them. Supplier, wholesaler, and retailer can now view the new orders were, how much the inventory was, and everything. Hope this helps.